So some of my friends have been looking for some help to migrate from analog to digital so they don't crisscross any wires on their first build or smoke anything. So with the help of the Runcam Phoenix Link HD, I'm gonna show a few tricks, a few tips, a few moves, and you are gonna learn something today. All right, to whoever is not familiar with the Runcam Link Phoenix HD, is another offering from Runcam, which basically has another low light offering which is as good if not better than the Kdex Polar. So if you're looking for best bang for the buck, Runcam Link Phoenix HD is what you should be looking for, link in the description. Okay, tip number one, figure out which flight controller you're gonna use. So in this case, I have an analog flight controller. What that actually basically means is I'm gonna have to solder on the wires that comes from the uh, Vista Air Unit Light or the Runcam Phoenix Air Unit Light, and then try to figure out where and which cable or which wire goes to which pad, okay? But if I have DJI ready, so in this case, I have the Hi-Fi and RC, which is also DJI ready, and I also have the Blade Digital, which is also DJI ready, uh, but one of the things that you're going to have to make sure is it's DJI ready, but which DJI did they actually mean? So in the case of Hi-Fi and RC, this is actually made specifically to fit the Runcam Phoenix Air Unit Light or the Cadex Vista Air Unit Light. So you'll know what I mean when you actually try to plug it in. When you plug it in, one thing you have to remember, red means battery so always remember that so for example here when you plug that in red means battery and then when you look at the corresponding uh, label on the flight controller it actually says 10 volts 10 volts means battery black means ground so the uh, white is now connected to the TX the gray is connected to the RX forget about the yellow and black for a second so it but the, the the one thing that is more important is the red matches the flight controller okay so this is okay because it matches for the air unit light okay but now when you try to plug it in into a blade even though it says it's digital it's for DJI HD you try to plug that in see where the red is the red which is battery is now connected to RX instead and black is ground okay and basically it's all switched and the reason why is for F722 Blade Digital is actually made for the air unit DJI air unit so basically it's for the full-blown DJI air unit for the air unit light what you're gonna have to do is actually go into the JS JSD connector start taking these cables out move it into the right position so the and the reason why you always want to do that is you want to have the discipline of red means battery black means ground and so on and so forth so i'll show you why because now we're going to connect the other half of the free cables onto the air unit light Okay, so if we wanted to make things easier to uh, solder on to these points inside, actually what we should do is just take apart these two components of the air unit light. So screw it out, the four screws and the corners, okay? So yes, you, if you're good at soldering skills, you can actually just go ahead and solder directly to the air unit light pads, which is rather small, but by taking it apart, you will access the bigger pads at the bottom uh, underneath the top component of the VTX of the air unit light, okay? So take apart the last screw, all right? And now what you need to do is just pull slowly the wafer light connector uh, but at the same time now um, now what I'm pointing at is the uh, UFL cover right there so you are going to have to take that out first okay all right and then now remember the orientation I'll show you later so that you will not forget so now let's peel off the wafer connector 
I call it wafer because it actually looks like a wafer. I don't know what the official uh, name is. Okay, you see that it connects it right there. All right, now we have access to the bigger pads in the middle. So you see here the bat and ground pads have already been soldered and this is not because it's been used. Actually, DJI makes Runcam and Cadex uh, test or actually I think probably DJI does their QAQC to test it up front. So you'll see here these uh, six pads and this is what we are going to solder on. So the way we're going to try to solder on first is step number one, we'll put a flux and in this case I'm using the Kester Flux Pen 751 and let's put flux on it, okay. Alright, so now let's heat up the soldering iron and I'm using also Kester solder wire, alright. So now it's in order to not have the uh, VTX move around, I'm using some blue tag to hold it in place, an old school way of doing this. Okay, the solder iron has already been heated up. So let's now start the soldering process. All right, okay, steady hands, steady hands. Okay, do not inhale the fumes, it's bad for you. I have a soldering fan on. Okay, let's solder the points. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're done. And I'm going to blow up a diagram that comes from the Oscar Liang's website to, so that you can see it clearly but essentially the pads are going to be battery, ground, RX, TX, ground and SBUS. And remember why I told you to forget about the yellow and black cable before? And the reason why is those yellow and black cables are only used for DJI controller. So because I'm using Crossfire, Tracer and ExpressRS and most of you are too, I'm not going to even dwell about these two pads, just dwell on the four pads, okay? So let's now solder it on. So remember which one is going to be for battery, which is red, okay? And a good practice is to always flux it again. So let's flux it first. So let's put a little bit more flux on there. The four pads that we actually want. Okay. All right. Let's bring the cables in. First red goes to battery. Battery, battery. Okay, and then the ground cable goes onto the ground pad like so. Okay, and then this was the TX cable. The next cable, the white cable, then goes to the TX, like so. Okay, like so. And then the grey cable goes up to the RX. Okay, forget about these two cables. You can either cut it off or you can just leave it up to you. But what I would do here is going to leave it. All right, but I'm just gonna cut off the tips so that it doesn't short anything. Okay. Tips, short anything. Okay, so now these are safe. 
So right now what we're going to do is put it back together. So what you'll see here, you have these horizontal uh, wafer light connectors. Going to put it back together again. Can okay, get rid of the blue tack. Okay, put that together. Slowly, don't want to damage anything. Once it fits, okay, put that together. Fits, that fits. Snug, all right. So just checking again. Look at the diagram. So before you were looking at it upside down. So now you're looking at it from the top which is the battery ground and then this is going to be the rx and this is going to be the tx okay so now let's put in the link antenna coming from the run cam hd connector okay put that in Okay, have that. And then, okay, now remember the orientation of this, which is the orientation is actually the circular point. Okay, let me just make it clear. It's a circular point will actually go inside. Okay, so first and foremost, you're going to have to put this. Right there, there's actually a okay. There's actually a small notch that you want to get the loop in. Okay, then once you cover the UFL like that, then slowly put in the connector like so. Fit that in like that. Okay, like so. All right. So basically, this holder then holds the UFL in place all right now you can screw it all back in screw it all back in see that so now what are we going to do here? Okay, so if from your unit it's already all sorted up, and then now you have a flight controller which is already a unit ready, you plug that in, then you're done. Okay, because it's made for a unit light. So you have the red connected to the 10 volts, black to the ground, so on and so forth. Okay. But now, what if you actually have something like this, okay, which is the Blade F7 Digital 7, F722, which then requires you to rearrange the connectors. It's not the end of the world. You can then, basically what you do is take this, uh, latch out like so okay and then you pull the connector like so okay and then you're just gonna have to switch the positions I'm not gonna do that because this is a tutorial okay and put it back in okay so and then plug the back in okay so the connector is fine okay if I've just used the plug plug and play I'm ready I'll just mount the flight controller I'll just mount the Vista unit uh, like that okay and then the Phoenix camera right in front like so all right like so so then I am done okay but if I have an analog what do I need to do all right so what if we actually use a analog flight controller? The problem with the analog flight controller, number one, it doesn't have the DJI digital uh, connector, right? And then you're gonna have to look at the pads. With the pads, you're gonna have to find a pad that actually has nine volts or 10 volts that can go into the Vista. Technically, you could plug it in into battery, 
Okay, so for example here, uh, for this particular flight controller, I could then solder this jumper so that this particular pad will provide battery in, but then that's not the cleanest uh, signal or power. So usually what flight controllers, especially the digital ones, will actually have the BEC and that is for providing clean regulated power. But in this case, I will not have that. So what I'll have to do on this one is use a regulator. In this case, I will then try to use the battery out and ground out and then battery out battery out into the battery in here this is a matic pec which then converts the battery um, power into a clean regulated power so the battery goes into the battery here ground out goes into ground in here and then the power out i can then power out nine volts coming out from here so i have a choice between nine volts and five volts the only difference is I will have to use this uh, jumper right there to provide 9 volts. But in this case, 9 volts is what I want to go for the Vista. Okay. So I know it sounds a little bit more complicated. What I'll do is just I'll just draw it up for you. What I need to do specifically for an analog flight controller. Alright, so we have the wiring diagram here. I didn't have uh, the version that shows the um, Blade 722 analog because analog is made for analog. But online, I can find this one on the Oscar Liang website for HELRC Zeus 35FC. So basically what you do here is connect the ground and VBAT just like I mentioned before, the Vista is made for VBAT. So you just need to connect the ground and VBAT here. But if you want a better cleaner image, you'll connect the BC, like I mentioned. But then now you find a spare UART, which is the RX or TX. So in this case, for the HGLRC flight control, they have the TX2 and RX2 on the left. So now you connect the um, white and gray, but in this picture, it's white and yellow. But on our example, it's white and gray. You connect the TX on the uh, N unit light to the RX on the FC and the RX on the A unit light to the TX on flight controller. So basically what it is, is you have, uh, because they each need to talk to each other, right? So when the TX, which is transmitter, it transmits, it needs to go to the receiver pad and vice versa. So this is basically the way that you would connect to a flight controller without the DJI connector. So you can see also here from Umagod uh, trying to compare the Phoenix and Polar on the 250 gram 250. So it really depends on what you actually want in low light. If you want a camera which is brighter and lets you see more in low light, then you probably pick the Phoenix, but then at the expense of a little bit more grainy image. But the Polar, you can still see it's less grainy, but then it's not as bright as the Phoenix. So it's six half a dozen of the other. You can choose either the Phoenix or Polar. It depends on what you want, but both are made for low light.